Licklegg, you're one of Patchworth's greatest supporters. Why in government did you feel it was so important to support our work so much? Well, Patchwork embodies, you know, everything that we need to do more of in society at large, but perhaps most especially in politics. I mean, you know, we're sat here in this beautiful, beautiful sort of uh, oak panelled, I'm not sure it's oak, but anyway, wood, wooden panelled uh, palatial bit of uh, the House of Commons, of uh, the palaces of Westminster, and yet modern Britain is not properly reflected in the people who take up uh, you know, their places here in the House of Commons. And as long as politics is not representative of modern Britain, we need organisations like Patchwork to, to, to inspire and emancipate and liberate those youngsters who are interested in politics but think that they have got no place in it. And I think that's why Patchwork is as important as it is. One of Patchwork's early ideas was organising the very first government black, Asian and minority ethnic reception. Mm. And you did that. Why did you feel that was so important? Because, uh, you know, politics is stuffed full of, dare I say it, as of, 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 you know, um, young men in suits who've been to, you know, been privately educated, who, it's, it's unrepresentative and, and particularly, not exclusively, uh, underrepresented in terms of the kind of ethnic mix of, uh, of, of, uh, of the House of Commons and anything that can be done, whether it's receptions, whether it's studies, whether it's research, whether it's campaigns, um, to, to try and sort of break those barriers down. And those barriers do exist. They might be somewhat more invisible, but they're still pretty insidious. There are real barriers to, to, a, to a youngster who comes from a non-political family, who feels that they can't sort of recognise themselves, that they're not being mirrored in modern politics. There are real barriers from, for them at the moment, and we need, we, need to, uh, we need to ensure that those barriers come down. And a reception is, a, you know, is, is the least we can do, it seems to me, to, to support an organisation like Patchwork. You're a champion of social mobility. What's the end product uh, on the social mobility journey? What kind of a society could we end up with? Well, what I dream of, and I, I like to think most people would subscribe to this um, vision is a society where the circumstances of your birth do not determine the outcome of your life. I mean, at the moment, uh, certainly compared to other developed economies, the link between sort of deprivation at birth and deprivation through life is 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 stronger in our country than almost any other you know sort of equivalent developed economy. That is a, that is a criminal waste of potential, of talent, of aspiration. Uh, you know, I want to live in a, in, a, in a society where it doesn't matter where you're born, what your mum and dad did, what the income of your parents were, what the colour of your skin is. If you dream big, you will be supported every step of the way to, to fulfil those dreams. At the moment we have too much of British society which has a sort of caste-like quality to it, where privilege is handed down from one generation to the next, and disadvantage is handed down from one generation to the next. I think a socially mobile, fairer Britain is one where everyone lives out their dreams, regardless of the circumstances of their birth. What was it like having the patch workers with you on your general election campaign? It was like a sort of carnival. It was absolutely fantastic. <laughs> it was an absolutely fantastic sort of breath of fresh air. They, they, uh, they travelled long distances, uh, and they didn't seem in the slightest bit, their enthusiasm didn't seem the slightest bit dimmed by several hours northward travel uh, up, up the M1. Um, and uh, I remember the weather was pretty, uh, pretty bracing, as it can be in, uh, in South Yorkshire, uh, and yet they, you know, they, um, they were out there helping me to you know, get out and meet people and, and, and knock on doors and deliver leaflets and so on. I'm hugely grateful, not only grateful to them, I just enjoyed it. I enjoyed it massively. Just that, if you could just bottle that enthusiasm and, and sprinkle it around the country, the whole country would be a much better place. Are we yet what you might call a patchwork country, or is there still quite a way to go? No, we're not a, a pa patchwork country. Um, at least we're not a patchwork country in the sense that, that you know, there are still very rigid inequalities between different communities, um, uh, between different you know, families um, operating in different parts of the country. There are great regional differences. There are huge discrepancies of in terms of life chances between different families from different incomes. And uh, a, a true patchwork Britain would allow individual merit and hard work and application and, and, and optimism and aspiration to win through. And I think we're still a long, long, long way from that. 
Could you put a time scale on when it might be achievable? Um, I think it's a, there's a sort of snowball quality to this. I think if you, you know, once you start getting it, you know, once you start getting I, I, you know, I was quite a lonely voice many years ago saying uh, social mobility, which sounds like a rather clunky sort of jargon filled with academic term. It's a very simple idea, which is that it should be about individual, uh, you know, aspiration. That, that there should be no limit to an individual's um, uh, aspirations uh, determined by the circumstances of their birth. It's now become... Uh, you know, terrifically fashionable for everyone to talk about that. The question is, what do you do about it? And Patchwork is a fantastic example of an organisation which doesn't just talk the talk, it walks the walk. But governments need to do it as well, and particularly when it comes to things like housing and education, you need to do radical things to unbottle that great potential which is still being squandered on a large scale across the country. Finally, is there any message from your constituency experiences about how we as a country might handle future immigration? I think the great conundrum about the immigration debate is that people, and you can understand this, people get very unsettled if they feel the immigration system sort of doesn't work. Uh, you know, that's why in my time in government I was always adamant that we should make sure that we can count people in and count people out. I think people are entitled to expect that a country can sort of you know, manage its borders and, and people can't kind of come in here illegally and be exploited by unscrupulous employers. So I think people want confidence in the system. But the great thing alongside that is there's huge, I think, st still despite a lot of the tensions that exist, there's huge generosity and, and, and tolerance in our country, which is really ingrained in, in, in long-standing British traditions. And so I think it's a question of getting, getting the system right but then being absolutely outspoken in defending those values of, of tolerance, of compassion, of fairness, of mutual understanding, which is the, uh, which is the bedrock, it's the glue of, of, a, of a truly diverse uh, country and society comfortable with itself. Thanks very much. Thank you.